explains the radio selectivity, the radio chemistry of an addition across an alkene that's not symmetrical. And again, the reason for that is or the Markovnikov rule is very simple. If you look at two possibilities, the secondary carbon is simply more stable than the primary carbon cation, which is what we would obtain if the hydrogen is added at this position. So secondary carbocation versus primary carbocation. So if you reverse the radiochemistry in the protonation, you end up with the primary carbocation, and that is less stable. So again, if you look at the energy diagram, we would obviously prefer the formation of the more stable carbocation. Okay. So we start out with our alkene. And we have two possibilities. We have the secondary carbocation. Actually, I should. Oh, this will be different. We have the secondary carbocation, and we have the uh, uh, primary <coughs> carbocation. And then we have uh, our product. So this is the secondary carbocation is more stable than the primary carbocation. So when I look at the distribution here, I have this going down here, and I have this going down. So the uh, pathway that leads to our Secondary carbocation benefits from the stability by a reduced activation energy. Okay. So this has the smaller activation energy, and so we get a preference for the Markovnikov product, which is the formation of the more stable carbocation. So that is the basis of the Markovnikov rule. Let's look at uh, another example. Is of course we already have a hydrogen here. So again. 
mean you add the hydrogen? At the less substituted uh, terminus of the double bond. That's how you get your Markovnikov concurrent. The opposite product is not formed, or in very small amounts. So I'm calling this now a very minor product. It's always a little bit because the possibilities are not infinitely different. But so it's a very minor product. It's the opposite radio isomer. This is the opposite radio isomer. And this is also known as the anti-Markovnikov product. So this secondary chloride would be the anti-Markovnikov product. And it's in this case only a very minor side product the addition of HCl. <coughs> okay, any questions for this uh, HCl addition? Following, it's an ionic mechanism, right? It's an acid-base type mechanism, and it follows Markovnikov's rule by adding the hydrogen to the less substituted carbon because of the stability of the carbon gap. So, any questions? Okay, glad you asked that. So the question was, you know, I want to make the anti-Markovnikov product, um, and how would I do that? And the answer to that is hydroboration or a radical mechanism. And so the radical mechanism is something that I'll discuss in the remaining five minutes. We're doing great. There has not been an LR. And I've been waiting here for some sounds, and so I don't know about you, but I think it hasn't happened, so it's great. So we have time to do the radical addition. So if you see different radio isomers, they are generally due to a difference in the mechanism, to a switch in the mechanism. Okay, and that exactly answers the 
question, how do I get the other three-year isomer? Well, I switch the mechanism from an ionic mechanism using HCl. I switch to a radical mechanism. For that, I have to use a reagent that's a radical initiator, the dibenzyl peroxide, and that gives me, gives me predominant now the anti markovskin product. So this is the anti markovskin product. But again, it's a different mechanism. So the ionic pathway prefers the Markovnikov product. Uh, if I use the radical pathway, I get the anti-Markovnikov. The actual mechanism is something we'll look at on Thursday. So I'll continue at this stage uh, uh, on Thursday, giving you a little bit more time to uh, get back to check for the next class. Thanks a lot, and uh, uh, we'll follow up on Thursday.